so uh, welcome to the second uh, edition of uh, of lean uh, practices for remote teams uh, i know that for some of you who were here last week you sort of be wondering why we are shifting gears by shifting names uh, but i think it's taken us a little bit of while to put a little bit of, of structure and uh, shape to the conversations that are happening over here uh to do a quick recap last week uh, we spoke about uh, inclusive hiring and remote teams so that conversation interestingly went on to touch upon various aspects including how do you uh, how do you look at performance how do you do accountability with remote teams how do you trust that someone is actually working which also brought up us to, to some interesting questions such as does physical presence equal to productivity and i think we had a lot of interesting discussions around this we had a few follow up questions such as uh, uh Uh, issues around mental health issues around gender etc and we hope that we will cover these in the in the next few episodes to come this week we are following up from uh, a few questions that came up last week and uh, i think i'm very grateful to rabimba uh, who's uh, who's one of the presenters today where we got up this discussion of saying that you know what does it take to be an effective remote worker i think that when uh, hasgi ran a poll uh, on twitter some time ago saying what are your biggest challenges with respect to transitioning to remote work we realized that a lot of people came to us and said you know how do you develop the discipline to uh, to work remotely what is actually involved how do you set up a routine how do you draw this boundary between work and home how do you separate your children from your computer uh, but i can't separate mine uh, but that's a different story and maybe we'll have a conversation around that but i think that uh, uh, this has sort of led us to today's session which is how do you be an effective remote worker uh, i'm not going to take too much time but uh, uh, just to tell you a little bit about the host for this uh, session uh, hasking.com is the place where reboot festival is happening do take a look we have a number of interesting events and conversations lined up for the next few weeks which will be coming up on monday and uh, uh, talk to us uh, hear more about us uh, today session uh, the way we will have structured it is that rabimba will make a short presentation uh, regarding his own experiences of being a remote worker uh, the the good things that he has learned the terrible things that he has learned and how he has navigated between the good and the terrible uh, we have uh, ashok hariharan from last week uh, and we have uh, indrani this week uh, welcome indrani and welcome Thank ashok uh, who will be respondent to rabimba uh, they will respond to his presentation and then we will open up for questions we're also live on youtube so if you're watching on youtube do post your questions in youtube chat we'll pick it up and put it on zoom as for those of you who are on zoom do post your questions on the q and a tab we will take it from there and we will respond in the q and a tab so over to you rabimba ashok and indrani rabimba over to you please do introduce yourself and then we'll take it forward from here thank you zainam uh, let me share my presentation Hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to today talk a little bit about my uh, experience working in remote, and I'm also going to tell you a few stories of uh, what happened, uh, what I thought was a dream situation, which I quickly realized it was not, and how I navigated through all of that. So, in short, this is me, uh, and this is specifically in different offices. Oh, where I just visited, uh, kind of to take those pictures, but I never really worked on those offices. Starting with my work from home journey. Now, starting from from me, my journey started after my bachelor's, uh, after I did my B.Tech, and I joined uh, Cognizant Technology Solutions back in 2010. Uh, I worked in Cognizant for three years, and at that time, uh, work from home mostly meant. Uh, very uh, emergency situations or situations where you just came back from work and something happened and you had to log into your work computer to sort something out uh, specifically when i said log into your computer it literally meant you doing specific or some kind of thing client to actually log into a physical in some way so that was kind of the work from home experience i had Uh, then later after three years i went uh, to get this to complete my masters and phd and throughout that journey i worked with uh, ibm tj watson research lab for six months and then twice more in ibm almaden in research and there i got my first taste of actually working from home and i will tell you a little bit story uh, how my transition differed from cognizant 
so my first day at Watson, when I was there, uh, my manager was introducing me uh, to the most important asset of an office, which is the coffee uh, machine, where the coffee machine is located. And uh, I was asking him different questions. And then I was asking that, okay, if I have to uh, stay more, uh, what should I do? How do I request cab? So IBM Watson is situated in such a remote area, unless you have a car or uh, you are availing the company bus, or shuttle, you cannot go there. So he said that, uh, no, uh, I mean, why do you want to work more? Said, if I have to, then what do, do I do? He said, okay, take your laptop uh, home. Uh, you are anyway gonna get it home. So uh, work from there. And then one fine morning, it was snowing and my manager literally just pinged all of us that, okay, guys, you don't need to come here today. Uh, the roads are not uh, safe today. And so we'll all just work from home for three days. And uh, that was really kind of revealing for me that, okay, we can actually just stay home and also work and like do proper whole day work. So that was revealing for me. Uh, I did that in IBM, but that still was mostly office and a few days work for home for different purposes. We could also do that uh, if we wanted to. Then back in 2017, I started working uh, with Mozilla, part of my master thesis at that time. And I completely worked in remote from my university, uh, which I was uh, in Houston. And I was actually, I, was, I didn't even use to go to university. I was completely working from home, from just using a laptop and logging into different services. And that was my first test completely working remotely without anybody, any supervision, apart from group uh, calls or Slack chat. So how did it turn out from? As my manager used to say, uh, working, in remote is hard, but it also is rewarding. How? So first, dispel a few myths that most people normally have. So remote workers are slackers. What I felt is that your peers are not your guardians. Uh, this is back from my uh, experience uh, in India. Uh, in always uh, feel that, okay, uh, I'm working and my peers are working uh, and from there, maybe it comes to that, that if you are not at office, if you are at your leisure, uh, maybe you're not working as hard. If somebody actually understands their work goals, when the work has to be done, and uh, keep on, uh, keeps on a regular update with their mentor or manager, they don't really have to be labeled as a slacker because they are working exactly as they're supposed to. If somebody is slacking, they can slack in office as well as at home. That really doesn't change uh, based on your geographic location. The second myth is that uh, if you're working at remote, you are working constantly, uh, which sometimes we get into that mode, but we are not supposed to work constantly. For me, what I figured out that if I had to, I had to find out a routine for myself based on certain deliverables, certain um, projects uh, needed more attention from me, for certain projects, it wasn't that high priority and I could work more on other different side projects. So for me, what worked was that talking to a manager and mentor to actually get expectation of the project and the deadline. And uh, they also had to trust me that they don't need to micromanage. They had to trust my ability to deliver on time. I figured that communication is the key here and that kind of helped me go along. The, this, this I really did not face, but I have heard it from my different uh, other colleagues working in other companies that remote working makes company culture different or it makes it tougher. Uh, when, I was, uh, as a, uh, when I was a graduate student uh, and what I felt was that the coffee chats and working like uh, from just talking to your friend, talking to you about different ideas, they actually give you a lot of interesting avenues to work. But that's not the only way to jog your uh, brain. Uh, for Mozilla, at least, uh, team outings and uh, working with certain yearly meetings was awesome. We had uh, yearly meetings. We had team outings, uh, which were done maybe uh, after six months, where people literally from different countries used to come together and work for seven days together and then go apart and then again work on their own time. That helped us build community pretty well. And this is something I 
initially struggled pretty badly. Remote workers are available all times of a day. And that's very easy to get into this pattern, especially if you're like me, who at that time was very new to the team, very eager, very good to show off, uh, or kind of wanted to jump into any conversation. It's very easy to kind of blend in and just go into that. More that you want to commit anywhere uh, you want to. Uh, that is really a bad way to organize your time. And uh, from my past experience, that actually hampered my work. Uh, I can uh, share a little story. So since I was a very eager and new uh, person in the team, I wanted to kind of prove myself. And uh, for such almost two months, uh, what would happen is that uh, most of our communications would have been in the Slack channel. And the team was literally distributed uh, across four or five time zones. And uh, there would somebody always be online somewhere posting something in a Slack. And you would, in a small neat team, where you have exposure to most of the projects, you would feel that need that, okay, maybe I can help in, or maybe I want to learn that. Maybe I will get into that conversation, most of the conversation going into GitHub uh, and GitHub issues. And what I eventually ended up doing was over committing on a lot of things. Uh, Essentially, after two months, when I realized that I'm not doing anything perfectly enough, then I realized that, no, I have to scale down. And even my man mentor uh, eventually told me that, no, you should not be available all the time. Find a rhythm for you. Use the Slack, uh, silencing, so silence the notifications, and build a rhythm. So the first thing that kind of bit me was, how remote a team can be. Out of our 13 people team, this was kind of uh, the whole situation for us. There were people working from China, from India, from London, from Europe, from Brazil, uh, three people from the US, all from different time zones. And it was kind of a really diverse team. And we had our singular times where we would we'd convene for uh, daily meetups, Slack uh, meetups, asynchronous meetups, but even then somebody somewhere would post something that, okay, I'm working on this. They would just keep on posting and something other would, would have jumped in when they found the time. Uh, I always thought that maybe I should reply. So that's what uh, kind of initially troubled me a lot. Till I found out to build my own schedule through that. Okay. So this slide normally would have said communication and collaboration is the key. So tools can help make or break your experience. And uh, I really found out that uh, the tools that worked for us was uh, for communication, we extensively used Slack and IRC. Uh, most of the video chats were done in Zoom and video. And for code collaboration, it was GitHub. But what really saved me uh, was Google Docs, uh, where we kind of kept all the meeting notes and everything together, and also Google Calendar, uh, which literally helped me navigate through that uh, uh, time zone. And for your organization, this might be different tools, but uh, fix on a tool that you're really comfortable with because they really help the remote working experience. Uh, when in doubt, I found that over communicating is always better than under communicating. Uh, for, I would share another story on this one. Uh, there was once upon a time a uh, feature request I was working on and uh, that since that was an open source project, uh, Facebook team was also working on that similar feature on that specific uh, product. And uh, I was stuck into something, but since I was shy, I did not reach out to my mentor and I kept on uh, struggling with it almost more than a week. And uh, fortunately the other members knew that I was working on that project and I was working on my personal repo. And then one day just somebody from actually the Facebook team reached out to me and said that, uh, I saw you uh, working on that PR, but you never, uh, like, you never pushed that. I see that in your GitHub repo. So is that like, do you want a code uh, review or something? 
and I jumped into it that, yeah, uh, can I, because I'm struggling in this one, and I think this is not good enough, like, way to implement that, can you, and he helped me through it. And later I realized, if I would have just gone to my mentor, I would have saved almost more than a week's worth of trouble and time for myself. Something remote working has taught me is when to actually call and when to chat. Uh, it's very really Sometimes just being somebody on some of the problems and just not come call at all. Uh, but I felt uh, for certain things, calls are more personal thing. For example, uh, chats don't come with intentions. It's very impersonal thing. If I have to give a constructive feedback to somebody, I found it way better to actually do it over a video and where my intentions, intentions are very clear and my empathy also can come between that. Even if somebody is giving me feedback, uh, I realize it's way better for me to actually see that feedback in video. Uh, this is certainly not the case when it was a court feedback, uh, but it was the case when it was for anything else. So verbal and emotional cues are very important uh, when you are working in remote because you don't know how your communication will get across to somebody. So just keep these things in mind uh, while communicating with each other. Uh, that's what my experience told me. Uh, there are certain tricks I had to learn uh, to make myself more productive. It was initially it was very tempting to just uh, in the morning take a cup of coffee, uh, plop in a uh, pillow behind me, and take the laptop and start working from the bed. And very quickly, not doze off, but very quickly just divert, take your mind somewhere else, and I was just not being productive. Uh, I found that for myself, uh, having a table and actually a place to work uh, boosted my productivity. It wasn't that I needed a separate room or work-like environment, but just having a table with a monitor was good enough for me to boost my productivity. Uh, so that worked for me. It might not work for you, but find a situation which where you are more comfortable and as well as productive, and that will help boost your productivity. Google Calendar was literally a lifesaver for me, uh, working with a diversified team. It helped me navigate through the time zone differences and all the meetings that were piling up, and it still helps me a lot. But uh, I, really, I really started using Google Calendar after only my uh, stint with Mozilla. Trust is very, uh, very important for a remote working environment because uh, trust is what your mentor and manager should have on you so that uh, they can trust you to deliver on time. So for me, what happened uh, or what I realized is that if we make our activities more visible, then it's way easier for them to trust us. So I would say that make your activities visible. It was easier for me because everything was going on in GitHub anyway. But uh, otherwise, just keep on working and keep on communicating with your manager or mentors. When in doubt, always post in a uh, group channel or just reach out. And something I really learned the hard way, don't overcome it. Uh, part of the uh, problem when my work life was bleeding into my personal life initially for two months, uh, where I wanted to prove myself everywhere, wanted to jump into every project, I started overcommitting a lot. And only later I realized that either I am not doing the job to the perfection I wanted to, or I'm burning out. I'm doing all I guess to just uh, finish up what I committed, and then I'm just burning out and don't have enough uh, enthusiasm for the next project. So take it slow and only work on the things you really want or you really have been assigned to you. Talk with the managers and mentors to manage your expectations in that way. Working remote is also very rewarding. For me, it was rewarding in a lot of ways. It gave me time to do a lot of things. So very two simple things were, uh, the first picture was uh, normally it doesn't snow in Houston at all. Houston weather is kind of like Chennai or Kolkata. It's pretty hot and humid. Uh, I was fortunate to have snow once. Uh, this is around 2018 January. 
And uh, normally I would have missed that if I would have worked from somewhere office in some other places, or even in Houston, maybe uh, on a specific timeline. And this is when it just happened for maybe one hour and I just locked my laptop off and went there and enjoyed the snow. And then I could just come back. Remote working gave me that, this flexibility. Uh, also, you have time to pursue your passion. For example, uh, this drink, uh, this is something I made before my thesis so that I don't fall asleep. So this is uh, really coffee brewed with Coca-Cola, which I would not suggest you to make, but this kept me awake for my uh, thesis defense. Thank you. Uh, I, I wish you all very best of luck and a happy remote working and happy working from home in this uh, challenging times. And I would happy to take any questions and any feedback. And I'd also love to know any tricks you have been doing uh, in your work from home or remote working uh, things till now. Thank you. Thanks, Rabimba. Uh, Indrani, if you could go with your responses sure. and also a brief introduction of yourself. Sure. Hi, uh, I'm Indrani. I work with Paytm Insider. We are a discovery platform. You would find all curated experiences and events on uh, at insider.in and there, that's where I work. Uh, Rabimba, that was a beautiful presentation and Mac, most of the points that you mentioned, I, uh, you know, I agree with you and it kind of uh, resonates with all of us trying to do the only differences you have been doing this for a while we have all come to this because of the pandemic, right? So that's the only difference because, so um, see, uh, as, as an organization, we are a very lenient organization. We have our time to time work from homes. People can work from home once or twice uh, a week even. It's, it's all fine. The, I think the only problem is or only panic situation is this is a forced lockdown. This is a forced work from home and people gen generally when you are, you know, forced to do something, you start panicking and you want to do the opposite. And that's the, you know, Mac, that is the most important factor of working from home forever, but, uh, you know, versus working from home in these times. So as an organization, uh, the day, I think the, the date was announced, the day lockdown was announced, we had a town hall. And entire 170 plus people, we all got together on Hangout and, uh, you know, uh, it was addressed. So there were few uh, things that the organize at an organizational level it was laid out just to ensure that everybody has a routine and doesn't know, you know, do, do, don't start running like headless chickens and don't know what to do next, what to do tomorrow, what do I do? So say, or uh, so we have diverse, you know, teams. I'm a sales professional such as me. If I don't go out, my meetings are mostly not done because I'm selling events, right? My events are not happening. So what do I sell next? So questions like those or operations who uh, their primary job is to go run the events on the sites. They don't have, they don't know what to do next. So essentially the job was to first figure out what each team would be doing, what as an uh, organization insider would be doing, and then how to make sure that everybody comes together and still works as a team, uh, you know, even, uh, even remotely. Right. All of us are working from various parts of the country. I think uh, except for the three offices that we have, people are working from Calcutta, people are work working from Kerala, Goa, and, and many more states. Uh, people went home on time, thankfully. A lot of people did. Uh, so the first thing is, like you said, setting up a routine. It is so, so important because see, we, in, we start working from home. Now in this situation, what happens is you do not even have house help. And in India, people, we are all used to house help. We don't know how to function if our, you know, house help is not there. So yeah, to figure out that because it, it becomes difficult also, you know, it's not really easy for a person who only knows, okay, to get up at eight in the morning, you know, fresh enough food is on the table, you eat and you have your, uh, you know, you book your cab or you drive down to your office, you go, you function and you come back and your dinner is again ready. But now you have to do everything on your own. And their time management goes for a toss. So what we uh, as an organization did was 11 to 7 is the time. Before 11, you are not uh, liable to pick up the calls. After 7, you're not liable to pick up any calls. 
so every day religiously at 11 o'clock all the teams not all 170 people together but all the teams we all get together so a five member team or a 10 member team or a 20 member team we all get together on a call we uh, chat about what we are going to do today so that the you know target for the day fix we we are not we don't know or we don't leave the teams hanging that okay we don't know what you have to do you can just chill through the, through the day so so that is one the first routine was set by the organization and uh, the second came at personal level so i will share what my me and my friends did and how it helped me personally so uh, the second most important thing i think from your presentation i is setting a workspace right it is so very important because if i if i just sit on my couch and work i will slowly slide down and i'll become lazy and maybe i'll okay two in the afternoon after my breakfast uh, after my lunch i'll be like okay let me take a five minute nap and that will become an hour that's not healthy at all and it doesn't set precedence for the coming days so uh, setting a workspace so uh, what i did is i have set up three different workspaces so that you know i don't get bored so i live alone so it's a little hard for me on a daily basis not to see or communicate with anybody else uh, face to face but uh, yeah setting up three different workspaces uh, and setting up my own routine what do have what time do i get up what do i do do i exercise or not do i read or not do i write uh, do i take up a course so i took up a course on udemy which i have been thinking of for the past 5 years i never did right so it did give me that opportunity of that extra time that i would spend you know in going to office and coming back those 3 4 hours that i would spend so that's a plus now the negatives are i'm a sales professional and it becomes a little hard at these times to sell things that we are newly developing we are developing digital events and then to sell them you know to a client on a call it gets a little uh, not difficult it gets a little boring you know when you're there in person you can animate and you can you know present yourself more uh, how do i say it you know you can essentially you can put the energy you know and then sell that even that you're selling because what we are selling is not uh, you know i'm not selling a pen i am selling something more uh, you know personal i am uh, selling something which is more inclusive so uh, so that was a you know bummer that was the first time so i realized okay now i can't meet my clients i can't meet anybody for the next whatever next n number of days and how do i you know uh, channelize that into something more strong and something more meaningful so i write and i started writing poems every day so every day a poem that was my challenge so you know i until this lockdown is over i'll write i'll read so i read every day i write every day i have 11 to 7 work i have my colleagues to talk to i have my family to talk to so everything is in routine so uh, and another point that you very very rightly presented was communication is the key everything needs to be communicated i i don't know if i'll say video call is really important but even a call to talk to the team members instead of putting it on slack because it could come as crass that okay why is she behaving like that but but i could i wouldn't have meant it like that so it's very important to communicate to basically voice communicate rather than just mail send slacks we also use slacks by the way uh um, so that has been uh, my journey a lot of my colleagues are facing a lot of issues because uh, they are not able to manage uh, their uh, you know their da- daily routine at home or somebody has a mother to take to dialysis so those are you know things that we share with each other on a call so that you know the other person has something more to talk about than work and doesn't feel alone in their grief this is grief basically the first thing is to accept that this is grief and this has come out in a very very uh very um how do i say it very strongly upon the whole world and we are all in it together but at the same time it's how i take it to each his own is what i like to quote here and uh, yeah i think taking a day at a time and ensuring that i know what i'm doing i know what my team is doing i know what my coworkers are doing and being uh, you know just making sure that we are productive on our own see the thing is trust is a very easy word to just throw around but it it all depends on how i can discipline myself so if i discipline myself i don't think i need to prove my work it will be visible on what i am doing 
and wherever i am i am in office or you see me or not or i work from home and i don't come on video calls with my video on or whatever that is so yeah i think discipline and routine has been my strongest pursuit or uh, not only mine or the people around me i think that's how we have been able to work around with uh, the pandemic and work from home for a longer period than just once or twice a week Uh, thanks indrani uh, that was really useful uh, and uh, also quite uh, candid uh, thank you so much for this uh, rabinga any immediate responses to this before uh, ashok presents his perspective as an employer uh, yeah so uh, certain of the points uh, i can relate to for example uh, the human element or the human uh, perspective of working at remote uh, that portion Uh, i kind of always so the whole presentation i geared up towards uh, my experience and of course that was mostly towards as a uh, engineer's experience uh, but there is there are another parts for example uh, when uh, so when indrani said that uh, now indrani realizes that you cannot go to uh, talk to the other people you cannot present uh, something that okay this is what we are working on like this is the product and everything it becomes really hard when you take the human element out uh, that is not something uh, we have been trained to do or we are not even accustomed to uh, getting these kind of behaviors online so uh, that whole portion is hard and i know that, uh, like a certain portions of that because uh, i used to uh, i sometimes uh, do a little bit of developer relations or developer advocacy work uh, part of what i do with mozilla uh, so talk about the same things i have been personally developing or working on uh, talk to developers that are in different conferences that okay so this is a new piece of technology this is how we are implementing this is how you can use that uh, this is similar very similar to that that you have a human element uh, you are talking to them uh, learning their pain points and also projecting that okay this is something uh, cool maybe you have a look at it now with pandemic uh and also for academic publishing a lot of conferences are almost all the conferences are getting cancelled and how do you actually get your point across even for uh, uh academic talk or even for a different talk how do you actually engage your audience uh it's a very different thing to work from remote but it's a very different thing to actually engage your audience in a online seminar or a online talk for maybe 40 minutes or maybe even 30 minutes Uh, we tend to get distracted very easily when we are in front of a laptop or computer uh, uh, um, compared to when we are in a uh, conference room with a lot of other people and the only thing we are looking at is the presenter so these are open challenges and uh, i think for foreseeable future uh, this has been a challenge for online uh, similar kind of events for long and uh, i think there are different ways we are experimenting and even i am experimenting that okay maybe we should do this or we should do that one of those exper- uh, experiments uh, at least for the presentation part was that use a virtual reality room where instead of giving them a laptop screen to look at uh, if they have means uh, by means you have like a google cardboard just a cardboard and uh, uh, your phone uh, you will be in a vr environment and that's again a way to actually insulate you from your home your distractions and there again you have only your meeting going on or the conference or the talk even that is not perfect uh, apart from technical aspects even as a social aspect this, that still isn't perfect because you can just go out of the vr whenever you want to but uh, these are kind of the open things everybody is trying on but uh, yeah i completely recognize that challenge and also something i could relate to was uh, uh, when uh, you first told that uh, you had to define a specific hours that from 11 to 7 and you are not supposed to i mean you are not you don't have to take calls uh, before or after that uh, for me at least i i realized it works for me completely opposite so i also uh, i do uh, so i ha- i had a uh, flatmate at that time when i was working uh but we we uh, like we used to stay in our uh, separate room uh but we have to do our home course and cook for us and uh, 
So do a home course and food, like cook our own food and everything. For me, and uh, so working for remote, flexibility gave me that chance. So it was that morning, okay, if we have a meeting every Monday at this time, I know that, okay, I have to anyway wake up before that meeting. Or in most cases that I wasn't ready with what I was doing, so I would just work a lot before that and then do the meeting. Then I will take a break, cook my breakfast or uh, cook my food, uh, just watch maybe some sitcoms even, and uh, take some break, maybe even like two, three hours break, and then again go to work and then keep on working for quite some time. And I really realized this will vary from person to person. This only worked for me because uh, first I was staying alone uh, and, and I don't have much other home responsibilities. This will definitely not work if somebody has their parents to take care of. For example, right now I'm in home in India and this plan won't work for me right now. Uh, but yeah, like I said that uh, I think that flexibility matters and it gives you more chance to navigate to how do you actually define it. Sure. Thanks, Abimba. Ashok? Ashok, you need to unmute yourself. Yes, I just unmuted myself. Thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, Ashok Hariharan. I run a company called uh, Bungeli Consulting, which operates in the legal and, uh, and legislative uh, tech space. And, uh, you know, we've been operating as a completely remote operation since inception. So it is, uh, you know, I, I am remote, the team is remote, uh, the clients are remote, everything is remote, you know, even the servers and everything is in the cloud, you know. Uh, so that's the business model that I had from the inception. And uh, it is, uh, it came about more uh, in terms of my own convenience because I, I don't like commuting. I don't like going to an office, uh, but it's kind of worked for me. You know? So uh, I just want to talk about uh, the aspects of that with respect to what uh, you know what uh, what indrani and uh, rabinda have said uh, so uh, you know one is that uh, this current situation that uh, you know indrani is in is not an ideal situation it's a, it's basically a business continuity plan that uh, people have been forced into their offices and that's what it is it's not really remote work it's business continuity uh, while what Rabinda has been doing is uh, perhaps uh, more in terms of remote work, you know, uh, you know, more in terms of the ideal uh, scenario. He was doing remote even before the pandemic, and that's what he's doing now. So the contexts are really very different in both. Uh, so just in terms of me as an employer, so uh, I just want to talk a little bit about how I interview someone. So when I hire somebody to bring somebody on board, and then uh, during that, I will touch upon some of the things that Rabimba has mentioned and uh, some things that uh, Indrani also mentioned. So, you know, when I interview someone, typically, uh, and this is uh, not a rule that I had from the beginning, I made mistakes, I hired the wrong people, I had to fire them, you know, I went through the whole cycle uh, because working from remote is not like working in an office. So uh, when you advertise your position, what you write in there is very uh, important in terms of who you're targeting. So, you know, uh, basically distilled from uh, my experience, uh, what I can say is what I typically ask is what is your intention uh, you know, what is your motivation in working remotely? Why do you want to work remotely? Why do you want a job that uh, does not have any office perks, that does not have the proverbial coffee machine where you cannot do office gossip and stuff like that? So I'm interested in those kind of answers. You know, why, why is somebody wanting to work remotely? So in my experience, typically this is all pre-pandemic. Now pandemic has changed everything, but uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, this was typically older people people who had experience of working in an office, they had worked in corporate setups and for various reasons, you know, personal or otherwise, because they had kids and uh, some people had worked 10 years and they wanted to pursue their own interests and they just needed uh, a supplementary income, uh, you know, just to keep their interests going. So they were looking at part-time or, you know, semi-full-time. So that was the kind of profile I found, you know, people who are willing uh, to work uh, remotely 
So, and so, you know, I found that these kind of people, they were a good fit for working remote because they, you know, they had a mindset that, you know, they had a mindset that, you know, I want this job, but I want also the flexibility of being able to sit at home and work. So I found that this particular kind of profile seemed to suit me well. Uh, there's also the culture fit. So uh, people who work in offices, they kind of expect certain things, you know, they want the copy machine, they want, uh, you know, they want the kind of uh, environment, you know, where they can go and they can have their lunch room. So, you know, I, I would make it evident that the interview itself that, you know, this is completely remote. I don't do any of that. You know, there's no, there's no retreats. So, you know, there's, some people thought this is one of those, uh, you know, not remote work, but work from home where you do monthly retreats. I said, we don't do retreats, you know, you just work from your place, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Uh, what I normally ask is, uh, how is your setup at home? That's very important, you know? So I think even Rabimba touched on it. So that is something I ask even at the interview, you know, what kind of setup do you have at home? Do you have a laptop? Do you have internet access? Uh, do you have a separate space to work in? And more often than not, the, the particular profile I mentioned, those people had already been working remotely and they had those setups in place. Um, so one very important mindset that you need to have to work remotely, I found, is separation of domain. So, you know, there is work and there is home. So if you look at offices, they want you to make the office like a home. They want you to spend as many hours as possible in the office. Um, um, not all organizations are like that, but that has been a very popular trend among companies, you know, giving perks in the office, so they want you to stay at home. So what that has uh, resulted in is people getting messed up because they can't distinguish between work and office very clearly. And that can be a big challenge if you're working remotely, if you're not able to separate what is work and what is home and you're at home so it's very important to have a space in your house as uh, rabinda mentioned a corner maybe if you can't have a room uh, a desk and a table at least for me you know i need a desk and table i don't work on the sofa or on the bed so just to have a separation of domain so work is distinct from do uh, you know work is distinct from uh, home and uh, if you're single, then it might be easier. You know, you don't have to deal with kids or you don't have to deal uh, with your spouse and, you know, uh, in terms of separation, but that is not the case for many people. So you need to have your spouse on board, you know, saying, you know, I'm, uh, I'm flexible, but these particular times uh, in the next week, I'm going to be working. So, you know, I, in those particular slots, I cannot be, disturbed or you know I at, at least give me one hour duration so I can work so those kind of things you know it's all flexible it's different for everybody but I think uh, something like that uh, people need to understand that you know they need to have that plan in mind and uh, this kind of you know what is what does it mean separating work from home you know uh, home is a domain work is a domain they're all these things and I found that the weekend is extremely important if you're working from home, even more than the office. So uh, the temptation uh, inadvertently when you're working from home is uh, that uh, even the weekend, it's hard to distinguish between weekend and uh, weekday, you know, mentally. Uh, even more so now in the pandemic, you can't distinguish whether it's a holiday or it's a working day because you're at home always. Sure. But uh, even prior to the pandemic, uh, working from home, at least for me, you know, when I started that, uh, in terms of conditioning myself, you know, the weekend is this thing. So I still do work on the weekends, but uh, uh, that's because I want to, but it's still, you need to mentally be very clear that this is the weekend, this is not work time, you know. Any work I do is just for pleasure, you know, any little work that I do. So that has to be mentally very distinct. And uh, I think employers also need to be aware of that. So, you know, at least with my team, I never ask them anything on the weekends. You know, it's, it's completely offline. I don't do anything in terms of communicating, asking them for status or anything. There's, there's none of that. So well, those are important points. Uh, in terms of time zone and location, I did that experiment. You know, I, uh, we had a 
guy from Argentina doing design work, uh, you know, for us, that was a few years ago. And it didn't really work because, uh, you know, Argentina has a very, it's like 12 hours away from us. So when he was at his best, uh, I was at my worst because it was the end of the day for me. So that, uh, because people have different behaviors depending on the time of the day, you know, evening, you're different, you know, then you're in the morning, then in the afternoon, because your mood changes, you know, you, you wake up, you have a different attention span, so on. So that didn't work for me. So I, I simply hired people in the same time zone, at least for me. So because, uh, you know, our team was, uh, has fluctuated from 11 people to seven people to four people, uh, depending on the number of projects we have and so on. So uh, at least in terms of time zoning for me, uh, I just got people from the same time zone. So maximum maybe Europe, maybe the European time zone is, is kind of compatible because uh, the, they wake up a bit later. So I could try to work in terms of, uh, you know, timings better with that time zone. But uh, North America, South America, no, even going uh, east uh, did not uh, work. Uh, we had a guy from Vietnam uh, doing some design work again. That didn't work. Maybe time zones could work with people doing a lot of backend work, which does not require, you know, immediate interaction or feedback. So I, 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 I you know, I don't know. I, I didn't venture there. Uh, I simply uh, got people from the same time zone that I was in. Uh, in terms of tools, uh, yeah. So a, at least in our experience, uh, video calling, we never did. We never did video calling. So uh to me uh, it was just a waste of time you know uh, let me be honest uh, the only time where i did video calling or we did uh, face to face interaction was when we were hiring someone so at least for the interview uh, for for many i made it a point to see them in person at least for the interview you know when i want to interview them we meet in a cafe since i don't have an office we meet in a cafe or somewhere. I want to see who this person is and, uh, you know, what is their intention or motivation behind doing remote work. You know, that was, that was important to me, uh, you know, more than any other question. So that, and there are people uh, in my team, I've never seen them. I, you know, I have their, I have a copy of their PAN card, which is required for legal purposes because I'm sending them money, but I don't know what they look like, you know. Uh, nobody looks like what they are in their fan card, so uh, I, I don't know what they look like. If I see them in person, I wouldn't know because I never did video calls. Uh, the reason being, I found it easier to do Slack. I found it easier to do things on chat. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I also found that uh, at least in my experience, you know, uh, even seeing how other offices operate, people tend to be a little bit more uh, judgmental based on how people look or, you know, how people talk, accents, and things like that. So those things didn't matter. As long as somebody had good written communication, uh, which was one of the things I looked for when I hired uh, people, you know, how they were able to communicate in writing, uh, I focused on that, you know. So, and also with things like Slack, there is a lot of, uh, you know, you can search the conversation. There's traceability. Uh, it's much easier for me, you know, and for other people uh, in terms of uh, conversation, how do you refer to past conversations? So it's easier to do it on Slack rather than on voice calls because people tend to forget. We are being blasted with video all the time and we don't even remember, uh, you know, what was the last WhatsApp video we saw, you know, so... Uh, I, I, I'm not a big believer in video calling. At least for me, it didn't, uh, it didn't really work. Uh, so, you know, basically Slack, uh, Trello for weekly tracking of, you know, what, who is doing what. Uh, and Google Docs, you know, those, those three were the three essential tools, so to speak. So, and in terms of order of importance, Slack was way more important than voice calls and voice calls were way more important than video calls. Uh, the voice call, funnily enough, they, I, I had somebody on my team and they wanted me to call them once a day because uh, 
somehow for them, they, they, you know, which was very strange to me, you know, I said, I, 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 you know, I don't think it's necessary for me to call you every day, but they had worked in an office for many years and they were kind of very conditioned to somebody calling them and saying, you know, uh, I don't know, just to, so I used to do that for some people, but in most cases, there was no daily stand up, there was no daily uh, call or whatever, you know, so I, I think with Zoom and, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, organization having 200 people on Zoom, that is just your office culture being transported into the online space. I, I don't think it's compatible. I, I don't think uh, people can do that at scale, you know. So you will get some kind of new disease called, uh, you know, FaceTime poisoning or something, you know. There's so much, uh, far too much screen time. So uh, at least for me, it didn't work. So that, that is a point I wanted to make. Uh, in terms of socialization, so I have a pretty different view from what you all stated. So to me, this whole concept of office socialization, uh, yeah, you know, this business of company culture is really a facade, you know. So I, I don't know what company culture is, you know. We are a completely remote operation. I don't know what company culture is. We don't have company culture. So because we are doing work, uh, we know what the client wants, and, uh, you know, we have things we do all the time. So people have personal lives, and I have a personal life. So, uh, and we are not in the same room. So people have friends of their own. You know, they have a society which is outside the office. They have a family outside the office. And they are dealing with that. So sometimes there is some seepage and, you know, somebody, uh, I had uh, one staff who, uh, whose wife had a rather complicated birth and he had to take some time off. So he called me at that point and he told me, I have this complication. That's fine, you know. So uh, I asked him if he needs help and uh, so on. But I, I, I'm saying this thing of office socialization is just office gossip. You know, and that is comes back to uh, the point that Rabinda mentioned that your peers are not guardians. While the whole concept of people working in offices is being judged by your peers and uh, it's tied into this office gossip, like, you know, how do we get ahead? How do we get ahead in the race? So at least for me, it was very refreshing doing things, uh, you know, being completely remote. Is That element is eliminated. There is no office gossip. We had the company Slack channel. It never had any, you know, it's never had any politics stuff there. It's never had anything about movies or TV or whatever, you know. I, I, it's not because there was a rule or there is a rule, but nobody spoke about it because uh, they didn't know the other person so well. So they, it was uh, simply about work. So they, they were doing their four or five hours a day. It was transactional. So I, I know it sounds as if there is no humanity involved in that. But uh, my point is when humanity is required, we are, you know, I'm available for a voice call or, you know, other people are available for a call. Uh, but in other aspects, people have humanity in their own spaces. And when you work in an office, you don't have time for that humanity. So here with the flexibility, you do your own stuff. You have time to deal with your family. You have time to deal with your kids. You have time to deal with your friends. And uh, they are your support network. So it's not the office gossip or the office Netflix uh, discussion or which is the greatest TV show or what's happening in sports. That's not it, you know. That's not, uh, that's not uh, our objective at all. So I know it sounds a bit radical, but at least that's my view. I think uh, for working uh, remotely, uh, you need a different company culture. The, you need a different view on what company culture is. Your coffee machine may not be important anymore because there's no coffee machine. Uh, there's no, you know, taking the trip there and talking to somebody, you know, chit chat. That's not there. It's not there. You know, you're doing that anyway in Facebook with your own friends or whatever. That is there, you know, so you have space to do that. Uh, uh, and I, I, at least, you know, it was not enforced or anything. There was no rule, but people were simply more focused on their work. 
And uh, maybe that again comes back to what kind of profile you're hiring. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, what could be a challenge for somebody going fully remote is how do you onboard uh, young people from university? So, uh, you know, you have like induction programs which are all oriented to people working in an office. Uh, but there's, is there an induction program in terms of how do you onboard somebody fresh out of university when uh, your whole team is remote? How do you do that? You know, so I think those are big challenges that people have to think about uh, if they want to go fully remote from the beginning or even for existing firms because of the pandemic, they've gone remote and maybe they intend to go remote. I'm very skeptical where that, you know, organizations will continue to stay remote, you know, uh, whether the pandemic is not there, that's my view. Uh, because the whole structure is not compatible with working. It's just a business continuity plan. So, but I think something very different uh, will be required in terms of uh, simply how do you onboard somebody new into a completely remote working environment? It is, uh, you know, all the current induction programs, they, they don't make any sense. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, in terms of the other points, so, uh, you know, so uh, what uh, Indrani mentioned in terms of 11 to seven, I kind of agree with what Rabimba said that, you know, I, uh, I think because he's working from an organization which understands remote, that, you know, that timing is very strange to me. So it's, it's basically taking the office timing and just postponing it and, you know, bringing it home. So, you know, what if you have a home thing between, you know, 11 to seven? You know, what if your kid is doing online schooling and, you know, there is a class that requires your intervention? What are you going to do from 11 to seven? You know, so there's questions like that. So it's not flexible again. Uh, and, you know, personally for me, after lunch, I take a nap. I don't sleep. I just go and lie down for half an hour. You know, that's good for me. I encourage everybody in my team also to do the same. You know, it's good for health to do that. So, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I don't think it is wrong to give advice like that because, uh, it, you know, in one aspect, it's, it seems to go against uh, the idea that employees uh, are going to be less efficient if you do this. So I do believe that for the company, working from home uh, is less efficient because you don't have people in a kind of industrial environment, everybody being controlled and doing it. But in the longer run, maybe if you do the cost over a longer period of time, we don't know, you know, we don't have those numbers. You, you know, we don't have numbers of organizations uh, who were, uh, you know, doing the industrial office setup and then they went remote. We don't have those cost comparisons. But I do believe uh, in terms of employee well-being, you're going to see that what people, you know, the kind of work people were doing in eight hours uh, or were pretending to do in eight hours, they would be doing it in four hours, you know. So I, I do believe in terms of uh, employee efficiency, it is better. But maybe from the industrial efficiency for the organization, it might look worse at the beginning, but, uh, you know, at least to me, from my own experience of, uh, with my staff and the way the company has gone. And, you know, it's not like we did small business, you know, we did hundreds of thousands of dollars of business, everything remote. Uh, even business acquisition was done remotely, mainly because of uh, contacts in the, you know, you know, mainly because we operate in a very niche space. Uh, so, but I mean, it's possible to do even business, you know, even like business acquisition completely remotely. And it's been a very interesting uh, experience for me. Yeah. So quickly, I'll just uh, add uh, or rather correct what I meant. So when I said 11 to 7, so we don't have office timings in general office uh, when situations were pre-pandemic. We didn't have office timings, right? So we don't have uh, punch in, punch out. We have none of that. In most of our tech techies, they work from home for months. I have not seen a couple of colleagues, I think, ever since they've joined. But since the, biz, the nature of our business is completely social, because that what, that's what we build, right? We build uh, engagement. 
we build we do events we do events at clubs and pubs or we do festivals we do music concerts and there you know there is a certain timing so if i am a sales person i am looking into sponsorship i cannot call a brand after 8 in the night i can't so i ha- i need that time i need to know okay i know that after 7 i can't call a person and invade in their personal space so i have to you know make sure that i call in that office hours because i have to respect their timings as well similarly for a business development person in my industry their life would only start after 3 in the evening because uh their their clients might have party or held an uh, event at a club till 2 in the night they would sleep off the day and then they so their they would start say productive day would only start at 3 in the afternoon and that bleed into the evening or going for a beer with the you know with the organizer so because the nature of a business is such remote constantly remote working does not work uh for our industry and i think timings were during pandemic were provided only because lot of employees didn't know what to do they didn't know how to start their day or end their day so it was mostly to help them but i know my colleague there are colleagues who are just because there there are events right we always have events we are now doing digital events so evening uh, weekends they are uh, hosting digital events so they would they they would start their days again late and then work in the evening so i think uh, that flexibility is there the timing is just a notion for everybody to you know people who do not know what to do during this time and how to function themselves or how to put themselves to discipline i think it's just a you know a method to madness that's all uh thanks indrani ashok do you want to touch briefly on the business development aspect uh, in the sense that is there a boundary uh, when you have to reach out to the opposite person or uh, that you know one can't be flexible and tell reach out to a client at 2 a.m. in the morning to like you know talk about business development uh, yeah you know uh, like you know in terms of uh, some businesses you have to meet people in person simply to build trust you know they don't know me they've just uh, read about uh, the you know they've just read about a technology or uh, you know they've uh, you know read up something on the internet and they are trying to get in touch with our company so uh, and uh, in those cases sometimes you know after a after three four interactions over email or over skype uh, i do you know so you know all our clients are overseas so you know that implies flying out and meeting them in person so that is uh, you know that is the way business uh, is acquired so you have to meet people in person at least in terms of business acquisition so uh, at least 50% of the business that we got is required me to go and meet people you know so uh, the other 50% was just them those people you know, uh, you know telling somebody else and they said this guy can be trusted this company can be trusted you can deal with them so that is the case i'm uh, you know i'm talking about uh, in terms of cases which required uh, human interaction in terms of uh, you know uh, the whole business acquisition part uh the you know i just want to make a point on this web vr that uh, he mentioned about this virtual reality office you put on something on your head and then you, you 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 know you have like a kind of virtual office space where you go and meet the boss i mean to me that is very scary you know more than anything you know so uh that is mixing up of domains again you're at home and you put on something on your head and you're in the office again so you know to me that is actually scary it's like bringing linkedin inside your head you know so or something like that yeah. thanks ashok uh uh indrani any closing comments and then maybe rabindra if you have any closing comments and then we can all get on to our friday evening uh, if there is a friday evening i don't i mean i for me see I've, like i told you so for us uh, as an organization this happened uh you know on a regular stretched period of a time because of pandemic otherwise we have a, like i mentioned we have a flexible time i myself work if i don't have meetings i work twice uh, you know twice a day i work from home and it's fairly okay because uh, i can still go out and i can still meet people i can socialize but at this moment at, during pandemic it is actually a challenge uh, for pe- for also businesses like us where we always keep interacting and our whole uh, 
business is built on that social gathering social engagement and that is kind of affecting a lot of uh, people that i know a lot of my colleagues a lot of my uh, peers but having said that since we started building digital events it's actually got, it has become easier uh, we all uh, have good amount of work at our hands and it is to if we have digital events if that is the next way to go i think working remotely wouldn't uh, be bad at all because uh, everything is anyway digital right so you don't really need me to meet people for you know face to face or person to person to conduct anything but uh, yeah i mean that's that's very industry specific very myopic kind of view because i come from a very specific industry uh, but otherwise yeah i think uh, a routine and discipline yourself everything else i think just falls in place that's all um, so just two quick questions before abimba you yeah. can give your closing comments uh, indrani i had two quick questions one is um, how uh, was performance uh, measured and you know how was their accountability in terms of like you know what was measured in terms of output before uh, this pandemic situation if you're saying that you know flexibility was involved and uh, the second question is that uh, it's very understandable what you're saying because i come from the same industry where uh, you know the physical events are gone and you know colleagues are wondering like you know what next job etc to do and in your case it might be acute because it's a fairly large team uh is there been any effort or attempt at mental health or counseling yes. or something that has come in and if you can share a couple of points that might be helpful to others out there sure so uh, i think uh, two weeks or i think the first week itself our hr hired a mental health professional uh, who is reachable person to person we also did like a there was a for for the lead there was a separate session there was an open session for everybody to join in and if they wanted to do uh, you know like a basically a session where everyone can talk about their uh, problems or she would address but she is available to us at any point of day i can book an appointment i can talk to uh, the professional and you know basically rant or share my fears or grief or whatever but yes there is a system in place and it has really really helped the session in fact the session happened last week where all of us were together and everyone spoke off nobody was uh, cared to not let their peers out with each other so that was really beautiful to hear what who's facing what and how everyone is coping with it so yes we do have a system in place in terms of performance we uh, like i said so every day we have like a small 10 minutes uh chat with within our within each team we know what we are doing every day every uh monday there is a weekly uh, larger discussion with the management and the leads so i think everything is fairly mapped uh at the moment to start with we didn't have a lot to do so uh, the, all the work we started putting on wiki so we created an insider wiki where we started note putting out everything that we are doing so it was uh, it is available to everybody everyone can see each other's work there is a lot of cross commun uh, cross uh departmental work that is going on if hr doesn't have a lot of work they are helping sales or if sales doesn't have a lot of work they are helping dd so this is how we are all helping and each other except for the fact that i can't code so i can't help uh, the tech guys rest i think all of us are trying to just see where we can uh, you know fit in if we don't have enough work in a day i think uh, that plus we are doing a lot of demos so everybody so everybody gets to gets a chance to be a part of the demo so if you are doing a stand up demo before you know putting it out in the market so we get a session with a comedian so those the lighter things are happening we do we organize weekly games uh, for employees uh, so i think yeah so far it has been actually it, it's been okay you know it's it's basically accepting and smoothing forward that okay this is the way to go and if there comes a day that you know digital events become larger than uh, you know on ground events i think we could really work remote we have been performing really well i think as an organization uh, thanks indrani uh, sorry ashok there's just a last question to you and i don't know if we addressed this in the previous uh, uh, edition uh, in last week session but uh, in your case how would you measure performance and output uh, for uh, for remote workers uh, what are the metrics you would use so you know at least uh, you know you know for us we had this trello we do we have this trello board where every person has a 
like I don't know if you have seen Trello, but it's got these kind of uh, you know boards where you know each you know each person on the team has a board, and uh, you know there are tasks for each person for the week. I don't want to call the task because it's a very loaded word. You know, just in terms of you know what is the you know what is the work that uh, they're expected to do. So I have a whole bunch. You know, I will, uh, you know the way I was putting it was. Uh, you know, I, I I just put a whole bunch of things, you know, not just for this week, but, you know, even for the weeks going ahead. And then people can choose. So uh, I, I'm just assigning priorities to these. And then I let people choose based on the higher priority ones, which ones they want to work on first. And they can see what the others have chosen because some of them are linked. Uh, so the idea, uh, you know, so the idea with this is, uh, it is very, uh, uh, you know, it's it's like very easy to see uh, what pace the others are going at and what pace you're going at. And it's very easy for me to see what pace everyone is going at because uh, some of the tasks were kind of similar. Some of them, uh, you know, uh, I can judge because I'm a technical person myself uh, that, you know, some need more effort and some need more uh, help. Maybe two people need to work on that. So that was an easy way to measure in terms of outputs, how, how somebody is able to do this in a particular frame of time. So uh, it's, uh, you know, the thing is, it shouldn't be too big a task. It's something that can be done in a few days, you know, let's say four or five days. So then it becomes much easier to measure uh, how people are doing things. So, it implies a lot of responsibility on the part of the person doing that. So, you know, that uh, is something I believe in, that, you know, that the person, it's not telework, it's more like smart work. So, you know, you have your tasks and you know what you're supposed to do and you do it. So uh, then sometimes people will come back to me at the end of the week and say, you know, this thing requires more effort because uh, X, Y, Z, you know, there's a technical problem, particular library didn't work or the tech is not so, uh, you know, it's in beta and that's why it's not working. So it's pretty easy for me to judge at uh, that point, you know, uh, whether somebody is, uh, you know, has uh, gotten themselves into a corner or whether somebody didn't do it, uh, you know, for other reasons, they claimed they did it and they didn't do it. Uh, I should say that, was a very rare problem where somebody claimed something and it didn't turn out to be the case. So at least for me on a weekly, on a week by week basis, it was pretty easy to do it on Trello uh, because the full history is there. And uh, even for, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, even for the people, uh, you know, working on the thing, they, you know, they have an idea chronologically, you know, how progress has happened for them. You know, they, uh, you know, they started with a small, cog of a product and then it's become something bigger. Uh, so, you know, just a simple thing, you know, nothing very sophisticated, but it was fine because, you know, uh, you know, we are not a big team. So uh, at least for me, in terms of measuring what people were doing, uh, of course, people work at different paces. Not everyone is at the same level technically. So there's always going to be a difference. So you have to be aware of that. It, it's not a, something to judge people about. But, uh, uh, you know, some people are learning, some people are already ahead because they had more experience. So, you know, those things apply. Uh, so that's the way at least we are measuring it in terms of performance. I'd just like to add one more point that uh, I think we figured as an organization itself that, you know, so when we work in offices, there is a notion called dependability, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, we tend to, you know, don't take we don't not we don't take ownership so we say okay you know okay i have not completed this because xyz person has not given me something that I, that i could so this time actually helped us the we the first two weeks we actually had a lot of time to documentize things put everything on paper whatever we are doing so i think we have reduced so much dependability and we've become more self sufficient than what we were before pandemic so I think that is one thing that has really helped. And I, I think it wouldn't have happened if the situation wasn't there. Or, uh, I mean, we still have dependabilities, but that is discussed, say, at the beginning of the week. And we know, okay, this person, this will be done only when this person, but it's very defined now. 
unlike previously when everything was everywhere all over the place i think that it has helped when you know that everyone is working remotely at and singularly you tend to kind of you know create your own uh, you know zone where you look for solutions you know what you want you clarify your needs very very you know on on a paper and say okay this is what i need and this is what i how i can solve and this is what i can't solve and i would need an expert person to do it so that has also you know been something really uh, positive about us working remotely i think okay thanks indrani uh, rabimba uh, any uh, sort of input from your end on uh, how uh, you know performance uh, and output were measured in the case of uh, you know sort of in the in the case of remote work that you know you've been involved with so uh, mostly uh, so i would say again this might not translate completely on the situations right now uh, just like ashok uh, ashok has been working from remote for very long time and uh, i have gotten also used to it before pandemic so it, it it's pretty streamlined so uh, most of the work i have done it's uh, uh, you have a task and you need to do it and you have certain um, deadlines or expectations from your mentor or manager that okay we should be able to do it by this time and uh, if we didn't use trello board uh, actually our team didn't use trello board other teams used but uh, we didn't need to because most of the times uh, every feature we worked on were in github issues and that provides literally a good timeline when somebody is assigned to that task and when somebody is pushing a pr so that is kind of exactly what trello does instead of uh, putting it in a trello board we have a like, accountability of somebody okay somebody said i am going to pick it up or i am going to do it and we know when somebody is picking up somebody is doing that work so you kind of know when uh, exactly when the work is being done and uh, you can judge that that is not exactly the same case when it comes to other functions for example uh, for any kind of dev rel activity uh, for conference talks it used to be the performance indicators or events it used to be the performance indicators that how many people attended your talk or how many people interacted with you or uh, how was the talk reception in general now when it comes to online uh, just the viewership metrics is probably not always the best uh, direction for that and also for podcast or if you go for a blog post how do you exactly measure that to or compare that to the previous one uh, so that is something that is like we are still figuring out and uh, so uh, regarding performance uh, i think that's mostly uh, how it uh, it was working before pandemic and i'm pretty sure it's working on the same way till now uh, but i also want to touch base on certain uh, other aspects uh, which uh, um, indrani uh, and ashok also brought in uh, so one of those is uh, the event aspect so holding events and those things but also the other aspect of support up that okay well, the vr aspect and uh, it kind of is scary uh, so i was in a situation i was in a unique situation because my the team i worked was worked with was the vr team so we uh, like we created some of those uh, tools to solutions so obviously we tested that on ourselves on our own meetings to see that how it works but during pandemic and uh, since the conferences are getting cancelled uh, so i typically uh, kind of paired up uh, with uh, mozilla and that was kind of the first big conference like a lot of people uh, where everybody including the presenters presented and uh, interacted uh, through online and one of those online venues were peer so you had an option where you could just pop in a headset and go and create your own room you can literally create your own environment it doesn't have to be a predefined environment you can create your own environment and others can join and you can watch something together and the reason we went that the origin uh, uh, the conferences are going that way is that uh, it's not exactly same for working from home then you are working you have a task you're working on it but the part uh, so an aspect of working an aspect of being in a conference is not only the talks but also the communication after that uh talking with the uh, presenter or talking with each other even you get to know people you get to 
meet people and also to network with other people. That is becoming hard uh, when everything moves online. So I think with pandemic, this is a very different scenario. This is even different scenario than what used to be our normal work from home. Because a lot of the transitioning people uh, are from industry which did not used to function properly or were not designed to function completely online. And now they are coming up with different ways or experimenting with ways that how can we actually translate all our work being online. Uh, one of those are uh, avenues is conference and I think Indrani is exactly in the, another like similar situation where they are kind of building their own way while you walk in that, okay, this is how maybe we should work or this is how maybe it will work better. Uh, I think Hasby has also been doing the same. Uh, and uh, I think for now it's pretty uh, open and pretty challenging. And I think we'll keep on experimenting and seeing how we can move forward to like uh, solving all these. I really don't think that just a video call or just uh, having like 200 people Skype and uh, Zoom conference is definitely not the way to go forward. That is for sure. Uh, but I still don't think just a video call conference or video call or uh, just going to YouTube live is gonna solve all these issues. We are in this for a long haul. And uh, I think uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, for working for remote, uh, I think we'll eventually come to a mix of that when we realize that some of the work and some of the people actually function better when they lift their own device and they can work with the flexibility. And some people uh, are, they are more productive in a more insulated environment like office. So they might be, so for example, uh, the employee uh, uh, here also was talking about who wanted a call every day just to like get a check on themselves. So they got habituated to that habit. So I think we'll eventually settle in the mix of that uh, post pandemic maybe, so, but uh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Indrani, Ashok, and Rabimba. I think this has been a fairly stimulating conversation. Ashok, as usual, the provocations and the thoughts were were very, very valuable. I've uh, I've made notes, I've put some notes on Twitter, and I think um, uh, definitely this will be of benefit to a lot of people who are watching. Uh, I, uh, for those of you who are watching online, uh, do visit hasik.com slash rebootfest slash clean practices for remote teams if you want to stay updated about the release of this video and uh, about the summary blog post that will come up next week. Uh, having said that, uh, I think that uh, I'm just reminded before closing that this week when we were speaking to Micah Lee about uh, uh, Zoom and the security lapses at Zoom, uh, Micah made an interesting point saying that uh, you, know, you can uh, harness paranoia to actually uh, do good for security. I think we can also harness the lockdown to actually do good for employee benefits and for employee welfare. Uh, I think it's an important thought that Ashok has left us with in terms of the industrial culture as well as uh, and how that paradigm of industrial work culture is different from uh, the culture that we have now in terms of employee uh, welfare and terms of employee benefits. So on that note, uh, uh, we'll close here and thank you very much. Hope all of you have a very good Friday evening. And thank you once again to all three of you. This was a very, very useful chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.